which we are putting much effort in improving in that regard. Um, I think the other issues or on, on, I think Honorable Makesi, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was on the, the issue of the feeder into the PSET system uh, from DBE. I would say perhaps in relation to the TVET sector, in particular, the introduction of the three stream model, we have seen uh, that yes, there is a challenge in terms of maths uh, 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 uptake in schools, uh, particularly in Gauteng and other provinces. I think the only province at this point in time that's got the high intake in maths is Limpopo, uh, maybe followed by a case at end, but the majority of the provinces have reduced. That poses a challenge on us as the as the Tibet College goes, we rely particularly for for those engineering and technical uh, uh, qualifications. We do need maths and science qualifications. However, with the establishment and the revival of the technical uh, high schools by DVE, it also giving us hope as Tibet Colleges because it means we now have a direct feeder. They do have what we call here in Gauteng, the schools of specialization, which is like a club fit on our centers of specialization, because I think the curriculum that they've developed somehow links up or articulate to our centers of specialization curriculum. And that, I think, if it's a model that is working, that could be rolled out throughout the country, and I think it's going to assist us as Tibet colleges, even improving our academic performance as well uh, in that regard. And then in relation to the vacancies and, and the filling thereof, uh, there is a, a plan uh, which the DG has approved in terms of uh, filling up of all the uh, vacant posts within the Tibet sector. We have already started. We zoomed in one of the province that was challenged was the Eastern Cape where we only had uh, two out of eight uh, vacancies that were filled. Uh, we have already conducted three uh, interviews uh, that have been concluded and the appointment will then be followed because we have made a submission for the appointments. We are finalizing the three uh, outstanding ones before the end of uh, uh, February this year. So we will then be done with the Eastern Cape and then move to the other provinces as well, which are part of the plan that we are rolling out. But the DG has asked that we probably do this parallel and spread out the entire country as the senior management so that we are not confined in one place in trying to fill or uh, uh, conclude this exercise. In relation to the disability units in our colleges, yes, I think as a pilot, we were starting with just one uh, 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 disability unit uh, uh, per annum. Uh, but we surpassed this uh, this target, uh, Honorable Makisi, uh, uh, by uh, having four that were established in our first year of piloting. And uh, I think we have set again another target for this year. We will be rolling out uh, to all our, our colleges, uh, these disability units. The only challenge is that some of them have already been doing this work. Uh, the only thing that was not there was the, um, the, the standard that was set to apply across all of them. But what, what we are also doing, uh, honorable chair and honorable members, is that through our siege, 10% uh, of the siege uh, funding is dedicated to us addressing the issue of uh, infrastructure that is conducive for uh, disabled students in each and every one of our colleges. And we are closely monitoring that, that indeed it's, it is happening. But uh, we are encouraged with the work that we've seen uh, in this regard. Um, I think there was also a question uh, from the uh, Honorable uh, uh, Chirwa uh, in relation to why colleges are under-resourced. I think it's, it's got some history into it. Uh, but we have seen that in the past uh, few years, uh, the priority is now moving more towards civil colleges uh, in line with our NDP targets. We are not there yet, but I think we've seen that there is some improvement. We have seen also in the allocation of NSFAS that there is now some uh, consideration for the Tibet colleges that are also assisted in this regard. We have seen a massive investment in terms of the uh, Tibet uh, infrastructure with uh, almost uh, 12 campuses that are almost complete uh, that will be rolling out. So that is part of the investment 
that we are seeing in the TV colleges uh, uh, in the past a few years. We have also seen uh, honorable chair and, and honorable members that in line with our NDP target of producing 30,000 artisans, um, we only had one uh, a trade test center uh, you know, post 94. We are now sitting at 30, 35 of those uh, trade test centers throughout the, the, the colleges. And I think that is going to assist us in pushing and making sure that we have more uh, uh, qualified artisans that are trained in these Tibet colleges. And these trade test centers, uh, honorable chair and honorable members is that they are, they are actually housed by the Tibet colleges, which makes it easier for our communities to access them instead of uh, you know, uh, you know, flying out because they used to come to Oliphant's Fontaine and that's putting a burden on the resources for them to travel and also get accommodation. Now they are decentralized, they make it easier for our, our, our communities to access them, our students to access them. And, and towards uh, closing, uh, Honorable Letier uh, asked a question on the protests at Umfolo Zitiba College. Yes, we've been engaging uh, with the college uh, through our regional uh, offices. The regional manager did provide a report this morning that the issue relates to the uh, water shortage in the township where the, the, the college is situated or the college campus is situated. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crisis of uh, the municipality, but in mitigating this, the colleges indeed went out to source the water supply through the water tanks. Uh, but unfortunately, we were told that the, mm -hmm. the students' protest uh, was around the fact that the service provider was not paid, which is a matter we are investigating uh, as to why the situation was. But we are uh, confident that the matter will be uh, resolved uh, soon um, as we speak. Um, I think we we have uh, I have also addressed the issue of the consequence management in terms of the colleges that are not uh, 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 submitting the information on time. Uh, honourable chair, honourable members, I think uh, those are the issues, uh, DG, that uh, may perhaps relate to the Tibet sector. Uh, if I have uh, left out any, uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll be able to respond to them. Uh, even in writing. Thank you very much, uh, TG, and thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. TG uh, Fujani. Good afternoon to the Honorable Chair and to the Honorable Members and the DG, the Deputy Minister in absentia, my colleagues from DHEAD and officials of Parliament. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if, with your permission, if I may be allowed to switch off the video, and then I will continue with the responses to the questions uh, related to, to CET. Um, now, as a start, I, I wish to acknowledge with, um, with appreciation the comments made by Honorable Mananiso on the, uh, the improvements that they've noted, particularly in terms of the advocacy campaign that we are conducting for our community colleges. We are indeed making strides and um, it's just that reporting on the APP, we are limited to the scope of the APP on a different day, on a different platform. We may be able to, to also indicate the, the work that we are doing in, in, this, in this regard. In relation to the chairperson's uh, comments in terms of us ensuring that there is a need that we implement the, the resolutions of the CET summit. And in, in, in relation... In, Right. Yeah. For CT. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Please switch off your mic. Didn't you for trying to respond? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. And, and uh, let me start with the issue of the enrollments because the Honorable Chair made comments about the enrollments. I just need to indicate that, firstly, the, the targets of the enrollments um, are, are very, very high. And there is that is as a result of the baseline when these targets were set was high and it was incorrect. The truth of the matter is that the baseline on which these targets are set, those students were non-existent. And, and the, the lack of a, a, a student information management system also did not make the matters easier. And, and the numbers in some instances were inflated by colleges. In some instances, it was just incorrect reporting. 
And if I must also get to the issue of what then did the department do in relation to that, I need to indicate that consequence management was applied. Warning letters were issued to all the principals who had um, inflated uh, baseline enrollment targets and disciplinary processes were conducted. And that includes sanctions against some of the principals were, were meted out in, in, this, in this regard. So the whole value chain of, of the consequence management was conducted in relation to the enrollment targets. However, I must also indicate that we were not allowed by DBME to change those en enrollment targets. So we have to work based on that incorrect baseline that we had from, from the beginning. Continuing in relation to the implementation of the summit resolutions, I must indicate that immediately after the summit, we did start a process of implementing the resolutions. And in the last quarter of last year, there was a dedicated meeting with the portfolio committee that looked at the, the progress report on the summit resolution and we reported on that. Must also indicate that, however, one of the resolutions which is key and in the context of the uh, comments by the honorable chair was the issue of moving our community college centers out of schools because the environment of a school is not conducive for our community colleges and it does not augur well in terms of providing a dignified environment for youth and adults as most of them are in primary schools. We have started in terms of moving into TVET colleges, but we need to scale up in that, in that regard. More work needs to be done. And we're saying that uh, community college centers can occupy a school if they're the only ones occupying that school. And issues of signage and visibility of signage and other matters would then be dealt with. And of course, upgrading those schools so that they are suitable for community centers. So indeed, that is taken note of and the work will continue and be scaled up and be scaled up in that in that regard. I also need to indicate that as part of the CET uh, summit resolutions on infrastructure, the department has committed one billion rand for infrastructure project of community colleges, and the the work uh, from that one billion rand will commence on the first of April of 2023 as that money is, is available with effect from 1st of April. So we will start seeing new structures of community college centers being built that are fit for purpose for our community colleges. Uh, in addition to that, we do have support from some of the CETAs in relation to infrastructure for our community colleges. An example is that the WNR CETA has committed 60 million rands for well, the building of a new center in the Free State in, in the Ritz town. And as a matter of fact, WNR CETA, their board and the CO and the COO are going to view the site, the site tomorrow. There was a question by um, Honorable Chira on, on, on regarding why are the colleges under-resourced and under-marketed. Um, again, here, it's, it's historic, the issue of under-resourcing of community colleges. We must also recall that their migration to, to DHET is recent, as recent as 2015. They were, they were previously a, a provincial competence. And in terms of the migration, they were migrated as they were, including the funding that was allocated. That was not suitable for the programs that are offered. They were suitable for ABET programs, but not for the kind of programs that are offered. In, in 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 the current uh, state state that 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 they are that they are in currently so it it has a historic background despite that historic background and the fact that currently if you look at the overall budget of the department which is at approximately 131 billion the community college funding is sitting at a, at 1.9% it's just under 2% having said that the department is looking at the overall broad uh, strategic intervention where funding will also be increased for community colleges. Uh, honorable Chair, honorable members, we must also note that in this regard, uh, Treasury has indicated that there will be no new funding and this broad a uh, strategic outlook for increased funding, it means that the funds must be sourced within the department. In the meantime, honorable chair, honorable members, I need to indicate that whilst we are hopeful and awaiting that process, we are looking for other streams of funding for community colleges as they need uh, to grow and, and develop and be um, institutions uh, that can be in conducive environments. As a result of that, coming from the summit, 
there is a commitment of 200 million that is um, already committed to community colleges. In addition to the 200 million, which is for provision of skills programs, we had an additional 50 million. And that 50 million we received from the TVET branch. And that is going to be ongoing. And that is for compensation of employees. This allows us then to appoint at least 92 center managers for our community colleges. And in addition to the uh, 50 million and the 200 million I mentioned, we have an additional 1 billion, which comes into effect from the 1st of April, and the 1 billion is for the infrastructure of community colleges. And lastly, and certainly not least, from, from last year to date, we have an additional 508 million that community colleges have received from CETAS. And that is for capacity building of lecturers and of staff, also those that are doing admin, as well as implementation of skills, occupational and non-formal programs. This is just an indication of uh, the funds that I'm referring to, the 200 million, 50 million, 1 billion and 508 million are funds that have already been secured. I'm not referring to planned funding. And the funding already tells you we have received far more than the current allocation that comes from mainstream funding. It is still inadequate. And, and also because it is project-based funding, it's not mainstream funding, the department still needs to look at sustainable funding that will be mainstream funding for our community colleges. In closing, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, I also want to indicate that whilst the Honorable Chair has indicated the appreciation for the, the availability and presence of uh, officials from the department, from our side as officials of the department, we were uh, very pleased to be part of the oversight of the, of the portfolio committee as officials. It was a great experience for us and it assisted us a lot in terms of clearing some blind spots that we may have as we work with these institutions on, on, a, on a daily basis. So it was a great learning experience for us as well. We have noted all the gaps that have been highlighted and we will continue to continuously work on ensuring that we close those gaps uh, for an improved PSAID system. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members and the DG, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, DG, and uh, good day, honorable uh, members and colleagues. Uh, Chairperson, I will be responding on two main questions. The first one is on the disciplinary cases. Uh, I think Honorable Chira raised a, a comment, uh, in particular asking for <clears throat> the types of cases that we're dealing with. But also, I think there is a concern in, in regard to the delays in the Western Cape, Northern Cape, as well as the Free State and Houghton province. Uh, Chair and DG, allow me to indicate that out of the 67 cases that we had in the third quarter uh, of the year, uh, around uh, 49 are in these two regions. Uh, and that constitutes 73% uh, of our cases. Now, the, the reasons would vary, uh, honorable members, but in the main, we are holding regional managers uh, accountable. Regional managers are required to submit to the DG quarterly reports on all misconduct cases. And, and in the two uh, regions, or rather regions, not provinces, uh, we did have a, a bit of a vacuum at some point in, in the financial year last year, wherein the two regional managers had gone on retirement. And, and I would say, DG and Honorable Chairs, that also you know, created some vacuum in the area of a play, playing an oversight role uh, at college level. However, we continue, Chairperson, to monitor the performance of a uh, uh, colleges, because most of these cases are actually emanating uh, fr from Tibet colleges. At this moment, already the letters are on the DG's table to write to these uh, regional managers again to implore on them uh, to continue monitoring what is happening uh, at, at colleges. But let me also say, DG and honorable members, the issues of postponements in the main 
are the main reasons why there will be delays in finalizing uh, these disciplinary cases. In regard to the types of uh, cases, Honorable Chira, uh, the, the list is quite long, but I will just summarize. We're dealing with cases of bribery. We're dealing with cases of theft, negligence. We also have a few cases actually, Chair, of sexual harassment or where oh. lecturers are having relationships uh, you know, with students. Uh, for instance, we had about five cases uh, in that particular quarter related to sexual harassment. We, we have had cases around negligence and, and dereliction. So the, the scope is quite broad, Chairperson. What we could do is to share our, our report without you know, disclosing the, the details of the, you know, of, the, of the officials that were charged. But we do have reports that we submit to the DG on a quarterly basis. We also report to DPSA as well as to the foresight. So we, we have that information. Then on the cases of load shedding, how, how, how we are dealing with it and how we are affected. Uh, Chair, this indicator is dealing with network connectivity uptime, you know, uptime. And uh, it counts the number of days at which we were without the network coverage. So there are two reasons. One would be load shedding, but the second one will be the downtime on the side of the network at, at CETA. So we've had instances where, you know, the CETA network would be failing. For instance, last week, I'm just giving you as an example, the whole of government almost was affected by the network failure at CETA, affecting various government departments. So that one is a matter that is also beyond our control. There were also reports that, you know, there, were, there was a, what interference uh, in Tembisa with the CETA network. But in as far as load shedding is concerned, the impact is severe at regional offices. The reason being that some of our regional offices are currently sharing offices with other government departments. For instance, Limpopo is sharing with their basic education. So it's not easy for them then to come up with their own generator to say we are renting or we are procuring our own generator. And we are currently addressing the issue of the permanent offices for our regional offices. For head office, uh, 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 Chairperson, we started a process of procuring a, a generator, in particular in one of our buildings at Francis Park Street, where there is no generator. However, we took a decision last year as EXCO that the department will be relocating from the current premises due to the ongoing, um, you know, uh, what power cuts by the municipality or the lockouts by the landlord uh, uh, because of some disputes that are between the parties, uh, either than, you know, the department. You'll, fi you'll find that there's a dispute between the landlord and the city of Tswane or between the landlord and the, and the public works department. So that is then affecting our ability as a department to continue with op our operations. We got approval from the minister for, for us to relocate from this building, but also chair, this is a decision of the Department of Public Works because the, the, the relationship between them and this particular landlord has actually broken down irretrievably. So we are in the process of preparing to relocate and where we are moving chair, there will be no load shedding uh, because the, 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 you know, there is solar, there's a solar system in the entire campus of the CSIR. So, so chair, I think those are the two issues that I'm, I'm able to respond to. DG, there are two questions on invoices. I'm not sure if Mrs. Pullman will be able to respond to that as well as, uh, as a question of, on irregular expenditure but I will refer those two questions to the DG. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you very much, uh, DDG um, Bob Ovava. Uh, that is our DDG for Corporate Services. Uh, Chairperson, uh, much appreciated the, the response. Uh, Mr. Zungu, there was one uh, question from uh, Honorable Makesi uh, that, um, it uh, speaks to the accommodating people with disabilities. I don't know if you can just come with that one quickly. 
uh, because I know a uh, very good work is being done in this area. Uh, but uh, I think it would be good to to just respond to that one quickly before uh, Ms. Pullman come forward to deal with questions asked by uh, Honorable Letsi uh, around the rent value of the invoices not paid, uh, as well as the questions very largely uh, that were asked by uh, Honorable Khakao. Um, and uh, uh, may I take this opportunity to welcome uh, Honorable Khakao in the portfolio committee, and we are looking forward to working with her. And we appreciate her questions as well. And um, on that regard, uh, Mr. Zungu, as well as uh, uh, Ms. Pullman. Uh, uh, thank, thank you, DG. And, and once more, greetings to Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Uh, DG, I think I did touch on it um, in relation to the disability units that are set out uh, that we started with a pilot of just saving one, uh, just to set as a national standard that will be followed by all the colleges. Uh, it is that target DG, that we, we, we overachieved because we ended up rolling out about four TVET, TVET uh, DSU units, uh, uh, which uh, when we did the due diligence, we discovered that there were colleges that are already running these disability units, but the challenge was that we did not have a set standard for all of them. And therefore we started embarking on that. Uh, there are a couple of examples, right? like uh, uh, Vembe, for instance, or Folozi. There's there's a couple of colleges that have these disability units, and 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 they are running quite um, efficiently. Their only challenge was that we needed to ensure that we have a, a, a national standard that is adhered to by by all of these units. Um, we further said, DG, that uh, the the siege grant we've set and allocated about ten percent of that. Uh, towards addressing the, the, the issues of infrastructure uh, for it to be conducive for students uh, with disabilities. Um, so so this, this project is being rolled out as we speak. Uh, we do, of course, require more resources uh, for this. Uh, but in our allocation of funding grid, we also have an allocation for what uh, is called SNE, Special Needs uh, um, um, uh, Allocation. Uh, which is given to each and every college to utilize uh, in addressing this 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 uh, particular need um, uh, in our institutions. Uh, DG, I'll pause there because uh, I think I did touch on it uh, earlier on. Uh, my apology if it did not uh, uh, come out clear. Thank you very much, uh, and thank you, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Thank you very much, uh, DG. So, Kikwa, uh, I I think uh, the question on the COVID how COVID has affected us. I think uh, if you can just come in and, and clarify that before Ms. Pullman. Thank you, DG. Thank you, DG. Uh, um, let me, I uh, thought I should address the question in this way. Um, Univer universities uh, complete uh, templates and uh, they are required to indicate to us uh, why they've not achieved targets. The uh, common uh, reference point was COVID uh, in relation to uh, the graduate uh, outputs. Um, but um, I do agree with you members, uh, this uh, cannot, this reason in itself is not sufficient. And um, my analysis um, uh, based on the oversight we've conducted thus far and some engagements with the students is that it's it's very clear, the numbers are also showing this in the reports, that um, universities uh, seem to not um, uh, have uh, proceeded uh, with the requisite diligence uh, around implementation of the foundation uh, programs. And uh, the, the, you know, uh, when one looks at our reports, it's clear that uh, they somehow have uh, become rather complacent in that regard. Uh, so in this uh, year, we hope to uh, 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 engage them much. with a new academic year uh, and establish how, uh, to the extent to which they are um, uh, supporting students in this regard. Thank you, Chair. Ms. Pullman. 
Thank you, DG. Um, thank you, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. With regards to the um, amount that was um, not paid within 30 days, it was 7.9 million. This is out of the 223 billion rand that was paid in that quarter. Um, out of 25,000 invoices, the four invoices was now unfortunately not paid. Um, and then with regards to the, the amount spent as at the end of the third quarter, we were sitting at 61% for goods and services without the commitments. And in fact, including commitments, we will in the at the end of the year, and um, we must understand, and there was a question concerning spending wise, if so, only in the fourth quarter may be rising. Remember, we have a huge amount of examiners and moderators that's also been paid in the fourth quarter for the um, November, December examinations that's been conducted. Now, a huge amount of that will happen in the last quarter and it's not fiscal dumping, it's seasonal because exams is also seasonal. So indeed, um, we don't foresee a big um, saving on goods and services and machinery and equipment. However, we might have a small um, saving on compensation of employees. So the spending to date right now is at 96, 94%, sorry, 90, 94%, um, including commitments. Um, I thank you, Chief Besson. I don't know if it's me, but I can't hear anything on yours. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Chair. I would suggest that uh, most of the questions have been responded to quantitatively. But qualitatively, I think we might need maybe to, in writing, cover uh, the nuances on, on some, some of these issues, particularly because in the questions asked, uh, largely, it's an issue of mitigation strategies uh, in place. Somehow this has emerged, uh, but uh, I think uh, we will be able to cover that in writing. Um, uh, questions from uh, Honorable Yabo, um, uh, particularly uh, in his questions, uh, he wants us to really be more detailed in terms of our control systems and uh, to indicate specifically in which areas of control do we have the problems that have led to uh, non-compliance? I think uh, in the responses by the colleagues, it has been clear that uh, our institutions and our head offices, including regional offices, uh, have poor uh, uh, mechanisms to, uh, for collection of data. And I think uh, this will speak to the, uh, the efforts um, um, uh, I thought Didi Jim Popovava would like to to comment on on our efforts of efforts to try and improve, uh, um, you know, information technology uh, as well uh, in this regard. And I'm very happy that uh, issues of consequence management are emerging more very strongly across the board, and uh, also that uh, uh, the, the 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 issues um, uh, around. Uh, you know, some of the institutions that have not, or provinces that have not, uh, you know, you know, met the targets. Uh, you know, although I would like DDG um, uh, Fuchani to just speak specifically about Gauteng, uh, uh, Northwest, and Northern Cape provinces, uh, because uh, of the interventions we've made uh, due to poor um, uh, uh, performance of those. Uh, um, you know, you know, you know, uh, uh, regions in certain areas, uh, and 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 poor governance in some of the areas. Very quickly, Ms. Fujana, then then we will conclude uh, in that way, uh, 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 Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, DG, and through you, Honourable Chair. Chair. Chair and honorable members. On the issue of the three colleges mentioned by the Director General, you would have noted that previously in my responses, I indicated that we had 200 million 
uh, that is in the contracting phase for colleges as part of the uh, Ministerial CT Skills Summit. And um, that 200 million, the colleges are currently contracting and will be implementing. However, three out of the nine colleges they were not yet approved for the for the NSF funding that is coming from that 200 million. And the reason for that, why they were not approved is that on assessment of their financial reports, we picked up um, instances of some financial mismanagement and also some weaknesses in oversight functions of the councils. As a result, the, those three colleges, which is Northern Cape, Community College, Western Cape Community College, and Gauteng Community College, they were not uh, given approval for the NSF funds. They were also given um, directives in terms of what needs to be done for them to improve on, on their financial management. That is despite the NSF funding, because it is an interest of the department that the, the funds are managed properly. Engagements were held with each of the college and with their respective councils because there are also uh, concerns on, 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 on the governance in terms of those, uh, their oversight in terms of the management of the finances. And they had to then develop and submit plans on how they were going to correct the identified concerns around financial mismanagement in the colleges. The colleges subsequently did that and that is last year. And in the last financial reports that we received and we assessed by the CET branch, we have seen a marked improvement in terms of their performance and particularly in terms of the areas where we had, we had highlighted. This has also sent a message not only to these three colleges, but to the rest of the colleges, that in instances of financial mismanagement, a college will not be given any additional funds. They first have to demonstrate that the funding that they have been given, they will manage it appropriately and in line with policies and regulations of of government. Based on their improvement and the recent reports, the department is then relooking their proposals for the funding for the implementation of the skills programs for the, from the NSF funds. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Chair, DG, and Honorable Members. Uh, <clears throat> Honorable Chair, uh, because the service delivery is very important to us, uh, in as much as we uh, charge management. Uh, but we also don't want in that same vein punish uh, our citizens who are recipients of the services to these institutions. And therefore, where a college respond, like uh, uh, I wish to commend the DDG for China for this, uh, where the, the colleges have responded positively to the interventions that we have made to hold them accountable, we will then release the funds immediately so that service delivery uh, is not affected. I think that explains uh, the, 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 the issues in that regard. Uh, we apologize to the committee that uh, we, we spend so much time explaining uh, underperformance. We hope that in the next uh, presentation, we will be uh, presenting a report that shows uh, the, 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 the potential of our department. Uh, but I think you can tell from the DDGs uh, in the manner in which they've responded that uh, we are, you know, we have our hands and, and fingers on the pulse on these issues and we will turn the results around and uh, look forward to tabling uh, to you a better result and a better results for the, for the organization. We take full accountability for it. And uh, we, we assure you that uh, we, we, we will improve, uh, no doubt. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Sorry about that. My device was taking a bit long to open its mic. Thank you very much to DG Sishi as well as to the DDGs for those responses. Um, we note I allowed DG yourselves to take some time to answer the questions because often I think we um, get so pressed for time that we refer some of the matters um, to, to many of the matters to be responded to in writing. 
Um, and I hope I haven't inconvenienced members in terms of their need to move to was the city hall. But uh, I want to appreciate the responses from the department. Um, there are some questions, DG, that we still would like for you to respond to further in, in writing. And um, also, of course, we must emphasize the importance for us to work towards ensuring that we meet all our targets. Um, I mean, some of the concerns that were raised around fiscal dumping and colleagues have tried to explain that uh, circumstances that might lead to uh, increased um, expenditure in, in, in the fourth quarter are well noted. But um, let's, let's also uh, lift, DG, the concerns around better, uh, well, I, I mean, we're not saying well, to some extent, I mean, if we if if our processes aren't working, and if there are these challenges, uh, external challenge factors and challenges that are contributing to our performance, it does does some to some extent speak to planning, um, and it, it does speak to execution. So we need to, and our capacity to ensure that these matters don't affect us. So let's let's uh, tighten um, uh, the ship uh, in terms of of that DG and ensure that we can have better performance. Um, and of course, we look forward to the responses. I think on the convention, uh, there, there weren't many concerns there, but we will have continued uh, discussions around the implementation thereof and progress that's being made in that regard. Uh, with that being said, honourable members and colleagues, this brings us to the end of our meeting. On Friday, we will be having a conversation on a myriad of gender-related matters, uh, briefings by the TV, um, by the CGE on further investigations that are done in the TV uh, sector. Um, we will be receiving some briefings from science entities on the work they are doing around um, studies on gender-based violence and femicide. And so we, we have also extended the invite to other portfolios uh, like police, like justice, uh, and there's one third one, oh, a uh, woman. We've also reached out to the multi-party caucus, a uh, women's caucus in parliament um, to invite them to be part of uh, those discussions, to hear the presentations, but to perhaps also make inputs, um, taking into consideration what we've been doing as a committee over the past couple of uh, years, but also as a resolution of our midterm review, that in order to address some of the concerns that we have as a sector or as a country, we need to break the silo approach and have a multi-pronged approach as various portfolio committees. So that will be taking place on Friday, honorable members and colleagues. And DG, um, it will be important for stakeholders like higher health or entities like higher health to also sit in sit in on those conversations and 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 hopefully learn um, and and uh, take note of some of the concerns that that may arise. So um, that brings us then to Friday, colleagues. Uh, thank you so much, and um, we we wish those who are debating, if there are any who are debating today, all the best. Um, and uh, the meeting has officially come to an end. Thank you.